Welcome to the Golden Jubilee celebration of Manipuri Cinema, Cine Dialogue. Today, 12 April 2021, the fourth day of the celebration of 50 years Manipuri Cinema, Cine Dialogue under the theme, Aspects and Importance of Film Archiving and Restoration. Sir Sivendra Singh Dungarpur will be the guest speaker and Sir Johnson Raskumar will be the moderator. Sir Sivendra Singh Dungarpur is an award-winning filmmaker, producer, and film archivist. He is the founder director of Film Heritage Foundation, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to the preservation of India's film heritage. Sivendra was elected to the Executive Committee of the International Federation of Film Archives, FIAF, for a second term in 2019. Under the banner of Dungarpur Films, he has directed and produced close to 1,000 commercials. He made his first feature documentary, Celluloid Man, in 2012 that won two national awards and traveled to over 50 festivals around the world. His second documentary, The Immortals 2015, premiered at the Busan International Film Festival and won the Special Jury Award for the Best Film at MIFF 2016. His third documentary titled Jack Made in Search of Jiri Manjil is a seven-hour epic that is an in-depth exploration of the Czechoslovakian new web that has won critical acclaim from cinephilis around the world. British Film Institute and Side and M Sound Magazine voted the film amongst the top five releases of 2020. While Sir Johnson Raskumar is an assistant professor in the Department of Communication, St. Joseph's College, Bangalore. He has been teaching film studies for the past 10 years. He has trained in film preservation and restoration by International Federation of Film Archive, Belgium Film Heritage Foundation, Mumbai. So let me begin with the felicitation part. So let me request Sir Sivendra Singh Dungarpur and Sir Johnson Raskumar to be kindly present on the stage. Please, sir. And we'll be felicitated by Sanju Kumar Bachaspati Mayum. And everyone is requested to put your cell phones in silent mode, please. Thank you, sir. Aduga lengsin bi rebo khai pum na maki yau bi rebo cell phones in silent mode thambi na banolu na ning sing jerry. Thank you. Aduga loi na na makha taba tharam ge da mak moderator da khusi na jerry. Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, at the outset, I would like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Uh, Sivendra Singh Dungapur for taking his time out and then uh, talking with us. Uh, at the uh, outset, right, uh, I would want to put the whole conversation into context. Uh, we are going to talk about the, the importance of film archiving and restorations and preservations. And we all know that, you know, in human history, museums and libraries have been there so that you know we keep a kind of an evidence for our lives for our cultures and for our histories and if film is a, a part of our culture reflective of our collective memory then film also needs to be treated like any other art form like paintings like you know dances music and everyone you know all the art forms so that film can be a, a collective memory for all of us and we have seen this whole throughout our histories right B dating back to 30,000 years back when you know uh, people started painting in the cave right so that it becomes an evidence for all of us and through that you know we we know the past and and then we can know where the future is. So in that context, right, I would want uh, uh, Mr. Sivendra to, to talk about the importance of film archiving and preservations for our future. Yeah. 
Um, thank you, Johnson. Um, and thank you, Mr. Sanjay, for inviting me. So, you know, when we, when we look at film archiving or film preservation, um, I don't know why we don't, we don't talk about uh, in the same way as when we look at preserving music, the other forms of art, whether it's painting, whether it's, uh, whether it's, uh, it's uh, any other form of arts, you know. We have to understand that films were a part of our social fabric. Films are what we are. We are in those films. So if we can preserve in a museum, a piece of stone, which you say, you look at that piece of stone and you say, how old was that piece of stone? Oh, it was 30,000 or 20,000 or thing. And, and who, whose stone was it? It's, a, it's from the Indus Valley civilization. But what about the people? The people who worked on that stone, people who created that stone, the people who were responsible for the civilizations to move ahead. So films are not just f about fiction films. They're not just about films of Bombay or Calcutta or, or different parts of, of the country. Films could be documentaries. Films could be uh, experimental films. The whole idea of the medium is that it's a canvas for an artist to paint. And, and that is why like painting, you decide to choose whether you want to do oil painting, you want to do paper, you want to do watercolor. The same way, the film is a canvas for you to experiment. The markets control what kind of film you want to make. You know, I'll give you an example. I started my career with a filmmaker by the name of Gulzar, one of India's great filmmakers, great poet, lyrics writer, uh, and uh, I went to FTII, uh, like lots of eminent people. I was in Pune, studied filmmaking. When I finished from FTII, I started a film with, with a big cast and uh, A.R. Rahman, but I wanted to make my own kind of films. I was very clear that the moment I make a big commercial film, it would be dictated by the market. The stars will come in, they would dictate how they would want it. And uh, the producers would dictate. So I chalked out what I wanted to make was my own documentaries, my own film. And that is why I made Celluloid Man, I made Immortals. And that's why when I got fascinated by what was happening in Czechoslovakia in the 60s about the Czech New Wave, I went all the way to Ch to Prague and made a seven hours long film because to me it didn't matter the length never mattered so you see creation is something which comes from inside there is no beginning there is no end it is the market which controls the beginning and end you know so it it really depends when you paint a painting could take you a, three months or it could take you just one month, right? If, if somebody orders a painting, he will want it within a stipulated time because he's paid you. But if you are doing it yourself, then you are not bound by the market. And that's why what happened. So preservation is exactly that. Preservation is about preserving that culture, that heritage, so that we, it reflects who we are, you know, from where we came from and where we are going to go. So preservation is preserving your heritage for the future generations to make it accessible. So that is why it's important. So uh, I would like to uh, bring this out right uh, in uh, on the floor. Right, uh, uh, you uh, kept on saying uh, uh, in in uh, on national media saying that the. Uh, the the way the films are deteriorating, we are in kind of a cultural emergency, right? right. Uh, uh, how how we have reached to this point, right? So we, even though all the filmmakers and producers are being part of so-called art, right? But 
how come we have neglected our films and what is the reason behind you know the 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 idea of film preservation has just started it should have started long time ago right so what is the reason behind yeah such? so let me give a perspective uh, there is the national film archive of india which is the largest film archive which is based in pune and film heritage foundation is a foundation we are the second largest of course no match to to uh, NFAI because NFAI started way back in the 60s 64 and we started in 2014 about 50 years later so we are no match to NFAI and we both coexist we both have our own uh, sort of agendas and charters and i have a lot of respect because i started with uh, learning from pk nair who was the founder director of uh, of the NFAI and he's the one who's created NFAI and and the films which is in the NFAI so when you look at when you look at uh, when the NFAI was started in 1964 you know we were making films right from as far as the late 1890s uh the lumia brothers after screening their first film in 1895 screened their films in bombay in a hotel called watson hotel uh in 1896 and that had a big influence on filmmakers you know there were people around in bombay and uh, all kinds of people who started wanting to make films and our first feature film uh, was made by dada saab falke in 1913 now that film exists they were it was made into four reels and two reels exist first and the fourth unfortunately the second and third is gone but from 1913 to 1931 is theoretically which we call the silent era the era where films were silent they were black and white but when we say silent they were literally not silent you know there used to be a performer who used to perform in front of the screen so every filmmaker used to write the notes of what the performance has to be done in front of the screen so there would there used to be a pianist or a mouth organ or a sitar player or a thing now if you look at the silent era we have lost 99% of our films can you believe it that means from 1913 to 1931 32 33 we have lost nearly 99% of our film only 1% survives and by 1960 we had lost 70 to 80% of our heritage dilip kumar's first film jawar bata mr bachchan used to tell me that uh, i've never seen it because it's lost and what there are many many reasons which we can take about why they were lost let me let me say the very important reason is cinema was always looked upon as a form of entertainment never looked upon as a form of artistic you know it was it was never looked at, looked upon as an art form so when you look at cinema as a entertainment you deal with it in that way then before 1951 most of the films were nitrate based nitrate was highly flammable you know it used to catch fire so many of the films got burned because of the fire many of the go downs got burned we lost a lot of films so much so dada saab falke himself while taking his films raja harish chandra on a bullock cart because of the heat from nasik it caught fire and it got burned he reshot his film in 1917 so the version we have which we think is 1913 actually is the 1917 version because the 1913 version got lost on fire and one of the reasons is why we can find out also is that in 1913 when he started the film there was no men ready to do do women roles there were only men i mean there was no women wanting to do men roles so men were dressed up as women uh, so he found a cook who looked very feminine and in one film that cook is playing double role man and a woman both you know so it's very interesting that how cinema sort of evolved and uh, it's sort of you know unfortunately we are not able to see the great work which happened in the silent era 
when the studios came i talked about the nitrate fires and i talked about uh, go downs getting burned but the other important aspect is the cinema started in three port cities madras bombay and calcutta all three were very uh, you know near the ports the humidity levels are very high and uh, because it grew there uh, films if they were not kept in proper temperature or not looked after you know finally it's a chemical process so they need air conditioning and humidity control to be kept so if they were not kept in that uh, you know films were being lost but the most important reason is our outlook towards film as an entertainment form and uh, that is why we lost nearly 99% and then 80 70 80% also the challenges today you know johnson we are making films in over 36 languages in india can you believe it over 36 languages which country in the world uh, i mean the exact statistics if you go to the censor board i think it said about 40 odd 40 48 languages and how many dialects so 36 official languages you know <laughs> just imagine for the censor board uh you know how many censor boards the government has to spend and then before the pandemic we were making films to around 2000 films and people have this wrong conception that only celluloid can be lost you know there's so many cases of digital films being lost or i'll give you a very simple example you share a link with somebody of an article if they're a journalist you have written after 2 years that link is not there only you can't find the link you can't open it that is the idea of digital because digital is fast consumption so unless you preserve that in a word file and save it there are many instances that many of the things disappear same way with hard drives if hard drives have chance their longevity is 3 years in fact in fact i haven't brought the chart of digital technology and i think i have shared it with you so there is a whole life span of a digital technology so it's it's both the same digital and celluloid have the same problems here yeah so uh, since you know uh, you, uh, we we know that you know films uh, you know have been neglected by by the conditions that we have kept and everything but uh, over the past few years or so you know you uh, and your organizations are on this uh, uh, movement about uh, saving cinema and cinematic heritage of the country and what not so you know what is the way forward from here right so in terms of you know uh, right now no celluloid films are made in in manipur 2013 was the last time we made a celluloid film now people have migrated to uh, uh, digital films and video films and and so on but what is the way forward from here right so in terms of saving celluloid and the the other formats that we have yeah um, i think i think there has to be a three or four very important step one is that like i mean if you look, i'm talking about specifically manipur film development corporation now uh, one is that you got to keep your 35 mm screening alive every museum and every archive have to have 35 mm screening because that is the reflection of history and its time also in manipur you know what i find is they're great artist i i i mean fantastic sense of design fantastic sense of art fantastic sense i mean i i'm i'm telling you that i've traveled all over the all over india and i find in manipur specifically and i've been mentioning to johnson and to sanju about this when you have such creative people the option for them to shoot on celluloid because after all an artist needs an option you know he he should not be forced the market forces you okay we need to shoot everybody shooting on digital so let's follow digital but all great artists today around the world all big hollywood films if you pull out all the hollywood films and 100 top hollywood films were all shot on celluloid last year including supergirl superman uh, tenet uh, you know all the big directors some of the films even even that uh, wonder woman were shot on film why is it when in digital format film is being used it is because 
the the grains and the quality the film gives what people do is shoot on film then they scan it and then they work on the post production on on digital so they able to get the best of both of them so the first thing i think for 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 you guys to do here is to continue the screening to do that that is the first to 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 inspire people to make it feel that that film is still there it it is an art form it is a reflection of its time and it is very important if you are having a archive in a vault then we need to do that second is the setting up of the vaults is the film heritage foundation team is working very closely with you in setting up what your vault is to continuously monitor to continuously look after to have proper air conditioning and hvac which we which you are doing and then to demarcate the non filming material but to have an infrastructure to continuously build this center for research for further studies to have a continuous course tomorrow that on film archiving and film research which is connected with the university of manipur so people who are want to do film preservation as a course and i am happy to work on that with the government that if we can have a film preservation course at the university which is connected with the research here uh, then that will strengthen the preservation mean please remember that in 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 the us if you look at it every big university has a film archive stanford harvard ucla yale and they all connected with the archive their archives are really huge so we need to now start collecting all the material and start preserving what is lost is is gone but what we have we need to preserve because that is something which is going to be for the future generations to see what the films of mr chand mr aribam sham sharma or any of the great masters of manipuri cinema is is able to see so our challenges is very clear that to set up the vault set up the non filmic have a infrastructure have a educational program with the university do continuous training and that is why in november we are going to do a big workshop an international workshop here the film heritage foundation which would train people from this region what i think what we've been talking to mr sanju is and to you johnson we want manipur to be the center of the northeast and be an important chapter in the history of preservation conservation restoration and research not only in india but also in this whole southeast asia region so that people around whether it's thailand bhutan myanmar nepal pakistan whatever you can call the countries you know afghanistan will look at this place in a in a much more different light manipur has produced only about 69 or 67 feature films and uh, we need to find where they are lying the negative some of them are there and uh, it is a tedious task and we would urge people from manipur to come and start working and support this institution the government must support in many ways the government first of all to have an educational plan uh, to that to help build the infrastructure third to hire people for different departments uh, one has to be a department for non filmic filmic and museum curation and like right now mr sanju does all the programming now that has to be interlinked with the museum curation that means continuously old film being screened so that people know like all museums and archives that there is a weekly program of films which are shown some on 35 some on thing and then you can extend it to the other parts of the northeast and further extend it to the other parts of india and also international films because you know once you make this place as a center you you would automatically see that people will start coming and i have another request which is something library and cafe these are two things you must create you will see the change you have a small cafe here it will become the hub of people people will start coming here and just sitting here and and saying where do you want to meet let's meet at the cafe there you know and you have some film memorabilia you know diaries or which regularly the manipur film development corporation takes out whether it's a yearly diary or a calendar or you know those kind of things 
the idea is to make this the center of this whole northeast and slowly india you know so so i think our task is is there we just need to be there and film heritage foundation is going to walk along with you right through the path we're going to help out we are very proud today that we were able to donate the first two rewinding tables you know for the film rewinding tables to uh, to manipur and we are very proud and this association is is not going to stop here we are we are uh, we are always been there and you know that that is our policy of the foundation our dream was that we all filmmaking states should have an archive it is not possible for one single institution or two single institutions to preserve films when you are preserving 300 digital films you know in 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 i mean you are making 300 digital films and somehow if we can make it mandatory for the manipuri filmmakers if we write about it that come forward and donate your digital films a copy of your digital films here and if that mou or or a kind of a contract is signed up between the filmmaker and the organization here then i think you will have continuous screening interactions and this golden jubilee celebration which is there mr anju they should go on like that all through i know funds is a problem but talks and you know having those kind of things really enriches everybody thank you very much for what you are doing yeah and uh, uh um, you know uh, to kind of sum up your this thing uh, i i really also do believe that the state support is really needed to kind of you know venture into this idea of film archive and and preservations and what not no uh, uh just to uh, kind of uh, uh, digress a little bit from from the uh, actual preservations now you know, we have set up uh, infrastructures vault and and what not right? and and conservations room how important is it right not only for the film archivists not only for for them but also for the general public or for the future filmmakers to have a sense of uh, film preservation right so uh, i know uh, i i kind of personally believe that not only film archivists and film curators should be you know in charge of film preservation but then i think the responsibility is on all of the film community per se right and then if not the the, uh, the general public as well so how important is it for not only for the film archivists but for other people to have a general sense of awareness for for film preservations and 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 restorations yeah i think uh, it's a very important point because i can give you my example johnson i'm a filmmaker actually now in india because because i because i had to jump in you know my career was was that i do several things at the same time so that part of my life no, nobody really knows i've i've shot over 1000 commercials and i shoot even now with some of the biggest dops and you know we we sh i make films all the time the the fact is that that so does scorsese look at the level of the director of martin scorsese is you know one of the biggest directors look at christopher nolan look at alexander payne or look at steven spielberg do you know amount of amount of conservation he does or francis ford coppola do it's tremendous they, they, so they, these are filmmakers who understand not only history because i have interacted with several of them and they they personally get involved with preservation they're so good the film foundation is such an important aspect what they do is they restore films all the big filmmakers get together and every year they restore one big film because they said we've become filmmakers because of watching so and so's film you know i have become a filmmaker because i watch aribam sham sharma so what should i do i should restore his film what should i do i should restore this one's film so unless filmmakers and public at large because public is also responsible because you are finally watching films right you are enjoying the films as much as we are enjoying so public at large and the filmmakers have to take a keen interest on history because because you can't make films if you do not know your own history of cinema you can never be a good filmmaker a good filmmaker is some who has enriched the history of his times and who's able to think about preservation so i learnt it from all these great masters and scorsese was my inspiration when he could preserve films individually and create this foundation and create the number of films he's restored then i said i must plunge into it and 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 give my whole heart so i would urge all filmmakers in manipur and in the northeast 
so now really start thinking what material they have what are the films they have they should approach barash i mean sorry uh, manipur film development corporation and say can you preserve our films and come and see the facility and assist them and and to think positively that can we make it better can we give funds why not you know i'll give you a very very interesting example there is a man called uh, sukumar he's a small time filmmaker every month he donates to film heritage foundation 1000 rupees from his salary i told him that you are not earning so well why do you do it and he says sir this is what i really love that this heritage is saved and every month out of his salary 1000 rupees he keeps for giving it to the foundation and i am so always i don't know what to tell him because i feel so bad he is not one of the rich people but it is the feelings so even if every one in manipur contributes 10 rupees also or 100 rupees also a ban you know and the archive can be built better facilities can come better things can come so we must look at contributing the filmmakers specifically and the people at large because after all you buy tickets to watch a film why can't you help where the films are being preserved where you can come and watch maybe you can start a film club which which is very important where, where membership is done i'm sure you either you have it or you don't have it where we you can regularly take out you know film circles a small uh, you know you can you can take out many many things about what is happening uh, but you must do johnson one thing is that your your monthly report or or a three months report of what is happening in the archive should be circulated to filmmakers across manipur because everybody should be aware of the work you are doing in in your archive and that also keeps people you know sort of engaged so uh, uh at this point i i think i would like to uh, open the floor so if anybody has uh, questions or or uh, comment you know uh, uh, you are free to uh, uh, to share with us and yeah so please raise your hand and then probably uh, sivendra sir will will take the the questions i have been teaching for quite some time and then i always say this like when the crowd is extremely quiet either they understood everything or they don't understand anything yeah but yeah so any any uh, uh, comments of yeah yeah actually i want sivendra uh, to talk about uh, the facilities or the facilities uh, we, we are trying to set up here so that people don't go and what we need more Yeah. So, so if you um, if you really look at it, one amazing thing which has happened here is that you set up a conservation room. Uh, nowhere in India except the FHF, which is Film Heritage Foundation, where we have a conservation space. Not even the NFAI has a conservation space. Uh, a space dedicated for conservation of film. Now, just to give you an idea, films were made on celluloid and acetate, and these films are chemical films, so they need to be treated through a chemical process. So, a conservation room, which is a creation by Manipur Film Development Corporation and Johnson and Sanju, will help us to save a large number of films. Then there is a vault created. Now, films need to be kept. in proper humidity and air condition temperature so racks have been brought individual rooms have been created and the films will be kept according to uh, according to its year according to its condition and the first task which was done here at the manipur film development corporation was to change the film cans into plastic cans and now today we are training people up on to rewinding films cleaning the films and putting it also a room has been dedicated to the non filmic archive uh, if you really look at it that it's not only important to preserve celluloid or digital films but also preserve things like photographs uh, lobby cards 
you know, scripts, uh, costumes, anything to do which went into the making of the film, we must create that. So the non-filmic archive is an archive which preserves that and that is very good for the researchers because the researchers want to come, want to look what the script was, is, was there a poster of it, was there any documentation, letters, correspondence, uh, signing amounts, uh, how did the shoot take place, the location, you know, it just gives you so much and even for the journalists because when they want to write, they can come to the center and use this as a base. So non. And the third important thing is the museum because the museum is a reflection of what you have created but also a reflection of its time and very important it gives the filmmakers that today you are keeping this filmmaker's work tomorrow it would be my work so he gets very inspired by the museum and the museum is also an inspiration for many many people so i think the task which and the goals which the which the manipur film development corporation has started we want it to be sustainable we want it to continue we want, very important, again I emphasize, and I had the opportunity to meet the Chief Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister again at a function, and I retreated the fact that please provide funding, and the Deputy Chief Minister said that he wants, he would definitely look into it and support. So we hope that the Chief Minister and the Deputy Chief Minister, now I met them twice, and I hope uh, that they would come forward and really support, by supporting their saving Manipur's heritage not just films it's the heritage of Manipur so we must save it so that people outside can have a look at it yeah, um, uh, I think you know uh, when when I met uh, uh, Sanju sir uh, for the first time and then when we saw the the film and then some of them have really really deteriorated and that's when we kind of decided that, you know we need a space to conserve right? uh, a conservation room to to kind of chemically treat and whatnot to save this film and at least to to hold the process for now and then i think we have uh, come to that point and then uh, you know i think we will take it forward from from here as well and uh, uh, and really th uh, uh, thankful to you uh, to put pressure to the government Right uh, to the chief minister, the deputy chief minister, because we need the funding. Otherwise, without the state uh, uh, support, uh, uh, this kind of facilities is not possible. Right. So, so that's that's there. Now, uh, I think uh, you know, uh, we uh, in Manipur, we, we we take immense pride in in our art and our culture, right? and and you know we have lived through it right from the childhood onwards right uh, uh, through the local festivals the dances are there the musics are there so so we we kind of take pride in in our art and culture but if film is going to be reflective of our culture as well of our modern lives of our modern culture i think it's absolutely necessary to to preserve our our film heritage otherwise it will be lost forever and it's kind of this uh, 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 very very emotional to, to see films deteriorating right right in front of our eyes uh, iconic films right some of the films are not to be found so we don't know where it is but then you know as an archivist you know uh, we can't lose hope you know we need to keep on searching so the, on that note right so uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I, I think I think we have a very uh, good discussions I think uh, sir has c uh, kind of you know, uh, put a an overall view of the importance of film preservations, how uh, uh, the, the, the need for educations on film preservations, the awareness has to be there in all of us, not only to the archivists, not only to the filmmaker, but to the general public at large. And I think this is what we are doing here in, in uh, Manipur State Film Development Society. Uh, uh, is, is, is a making also a statement to, to the other state as well, right? That you know, we if we have some passion, if we if we need uh, 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 to save our cine cinematic heritage, I think this we will could be the the torch bearer of sort, right? To to kind of save cinema and cinema, as we all know, without languages, cinematic languages is is, is what we we all are in. So. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Sivendra sir, for, for taking your time out. And, and yeah, th thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Johnson. Thank you, Sam Sanjeevi. And we just hope that uh, we get a movement started here and uh, people start coming forward. And, uh, and we must, con you know, not lose the momentum. The idea is the momentum has been created. We should continue that momentum. The moment we give it up, 
like all government institutions we don't want to hear that it's it's another way where we started and it's sort of rolled and uh, please you know let's be in touch and uh, i mean we are we're going to be constantly monitoring what's happening and uh, like i said our commitment of film heritage foundation is there so please uh, anything you need us to do or help us right through more than what we are doing right now we are ready to do it at every stage and every corner uh, i just love manipur i mean i'm just telling you i just feel so happy to be here away from bombay for so long uh, with what's happening in bombay <laughs> uh, i don't feel like going back but but you know it's so beautiful to be here and i have so many friends here you know so thank you very much and thank you very much yeah bye bye thank you everyone thank you so much